Uh, hey guys, uh, Sam back with you here. I thought we'd uh, take a look at a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, coins that we've been trading that uh, we've had analysis on and see how they're doing in the midst of this uh, corrective activity and this bounce and any conclusions we can draw from this. Now, um, I want to keep this to just two coins here. So we're going to look at Ethereum and Dash. Uh, just a, they, they, The videos end up being too long if, uh, if I go into more than that. And I like to keep them uh, relatively short. 15 minutes uh, is kind of my target so you can take them in bite sizes uh, so but it, let's take a look here now this is ethereum against the us dollar tether on poloniex and uh, if we look here so we can see you know some very similar act action that we're seeing in in bitcoin all right so we've had this very deep correction and now, now we're getting this this powerful snapback so if i look at this you know <sighs> This is a little more problematic than than Bitcoin because of the depth of this correction. So this move here, we've come just shy of the 786, which implies a couple of things. So characteristically, uh, in, in Elliott Wave speak, there are waves that have certain characteristics. So if we're looking here, this is potentially characteristic of a second wave. So this could be that we're in a much larger uh, wave structure here, and that this is just a one we're putting in a two before we go off to new highs in a three, four, five. That's one possibility. Now, lo looking below and just keeping it as simple as we can with regards to how we uh, uh, take advantage of the Elliott oscillator, we know that the, the third wave, the impulsive wave, is always the strongest here. Always the strongest. So we can take a look at this and see, well, this is certainly much stronger here than it was when we came up the second time into this double top. So there's another possibility is that we've put in a three here and we have a failed fifth or in Elliott speak, it would be a truncated fifth. It doesn't quite get to a new high. And you see this uh, commonly in, in double topping in this V formation. It's not, it's not that uncommon, right? It's just a double top, right? Which you hear and you have seen uh, many, many times. But if that's the case, if this is our three and here's a very deep four into a, a truncated fifth, well, then we got to draw this a little bit differently and we can start to zero in on this kind of we're in between. And, you know, I, whenever I see a stop somewhere, that's not right on a fib level, I want to start digging deeper to see if I can find some other relationship in that pivot to build a case that that's a good low. So if I go to, uh, if I go to an Elliott count and I start to think about this in different terms uh, under the assumption that this is my three, well, I've got some sort of a, you know, it doesn't really, it, it, it almost doesn't matter where, where the one starts, but there's a one there's our two, three, four into this failed fifth. Possible, possible. And we're now correcting this. But the, the other possibility is that we are correcting the entire thing. So looking at that, then if I take my fib tool and I go to the lowest low that I can actually see here and I pull up to our failed fifth, now take a look at that. Let, let, let me take this off here so you can see that a little more clearly. Where do we go? Right, I mean, to the to the tick, to the to the 50% of that entire move, on the assumption that this is our this is our top here, the failed fifth, and we've just retraced 50% of that entire move. That starts to build a stronger case for for this low as a solid pivot. Now, we don't have enough information yet to be, for it to be conclusive. We've got to get up, come back down for a retest, some sort of retracement, and then put in a higher low, and then off to a, new, uh, to a higher high. And then we can make some assumptions about uh, the trend being reestablished. And now we're looking for impulsive behavior, like we had here, where we had this clear one, two, three, four came down, didn't take out the one, and then we're up to a five possible scenarios possible scenarios but uh, just like Bitcoin we've got some work to do here so we've got a couple of retracements to look at so if we go here we can see that that you know that was our we're in between the 50 and the 618 we got through we got through the 23 we didn't quite make the 786 so if we look at this on an all the way halfway back well we're going to hit some pretty stiff resistance up here 
we've also got this pull here and we've got the last pull before we head down and if I take that down let's go to a four hour and we look at that look where we are right now and no surprise we've got these um, we've got these prior support areas providing resistance on the way up I can get that on there all right so that's no, no surprise, we go j just a few a few dollars shy of that, and we're hitting some resistance there. So we've got to get through this 618, we've got to get through this 618, and we've got to get through this 618 to really confirm that we're now off into a new impulsive structure and heading to new highs. So some work to be done there, but I thought you might find that interesting uh, as we look at this low and trying to evaluate how solid that is to work from. So let's, uh, let's go over to Dash, take a look there. Now this is... Um, Dash, you know, I'm in this trade. This, this is a good example of, uh, you know, there's a little bit of luck here where uh, the 65 can keep you out of trouble. So, you know, when you're coming down to challenge the 618 and you're looking for entry there or if you got long at the 50 and, you know, you don't want to be wicked out on the, on the 618 because you know there's going to be stops that are close there, uh, going just under the 65 can be a good place. And I, miraculously, I... I, I was spared getting stopped out on the low there. So, and and look at the reaction that we're getting. So, you know, we we've come right to this right to this swing high of this one, two, three, four, five. So, you know, potentially we're we're in good shape here, heading off to a, a minimum target, the negative twenty three here. Um, sometimes you get lucky, but that's where the sixty five can be a useful tool to just be a few a few dollars or a few ticks or pips below it. Uh, because you know there's going to be, as you've seen so many times in the charts that I've, I've drawn for you, wicking action to run the stops that are sitting just below the 618. That 65 is, is a useful tool. So if we look here, also, I, if I recall from this last swing low up to this high, take a look at that you know, more evidence that this is a solid low. So if we're retracing that entire move of this one, two, three, four, we've come right to the, so we get this little, you know, we had it drawn a little bit higher. So we get this, this little pocket here. Yeah. Little pocket if I can draw it. That was a nice entry. Very nice. I mean, so look, we came down here. There's, we, we get a little shy of the 50. Up we go, come down to the 618. The 65 spares us the stop out. Um, the swing high is the is the support, prior resistance becoming support. We also had it here. Come to the we've got this little cluster that that's what we're always looking for. The six six one eight and the fifty, you know, overlapping almost to the dollar, and you get that little cluster. Then we've got energy in the oscillators that can move higher. We get to almost two, two and a half. Uh, standard deviations from the VWAP, all, all evidence that there's there, the energy is there for this to snap back. Now, we're not completely out of the woods. We can't definitively say that the corrective low is in, but those are very good signs. So we, we, we look, we watch, we look for that higher low, and that's the next tradable event if you're not already in it. All right, that's a wrap for now. Back to you, more with, uh, to, back to you when I've got some more a little bit later today.